Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? The obese are weak. Well, who would have guessed? Uh, junior jihadists in a trans rampage. <laughs> You're here with the big sig tig. What do we got today? Boom. Poor health, poor muscle health common in people with obesity. Fine study. Because we definitely needed a study to figure out that people who are obese probably have uh, weak muscles. New research being presented at the European Congress on Obesity, ECO, hilarious, has found that poor muscle health is associated with a higher risk of early death in people living with obesity. Well, I mean, is it the poor muscle health that's associated with a higher risk of early death? Or is it the tremendous amount of weight and clogged arteries with plaque from all of the terrible food choices? Individuals with obesity often experience poor muscle health due to several factors. Excessive adipose tissue accumulation can lead to chronic low-grade inflammation which contributes to muscle insulin resistance and impairs muscle function. Additionally, increased fat mass can result in mechanical loading of muscles, uh, leading to reduced muscle strength and endurance. Hormonal imbalances associated with obesity, such as elevated levels of adipokines and decreased levels of anabolic hormones, further exacerbate muscle dysfunction. In their study, lead researcher Dr. Jennifer Linge and colleagues utilize software to analyze scans from 56,109 participants enrolled in the UK Biobank study. They assessed muscle volume, indicating muscle quantity, and muscle fat, indicating muscle quality. How much muscle, or sorry, how much fat is in the muscle? Because, you know, you have subcutaneous fat, which is just underneath the skin, and then you have intramuscular fat. That's the most difficult fat to lose, the unhealthiest. The assessed muscle volume, indicating muscle quantity, and muscle fat, indicating muscle quality, and calculated personalized muscle volume z-scores to compare participants' muscle volume to the average for their sex and body size. Participants were categorized into four groups based on their muscle composition. Normal, high muscle fat only, low muscle volume z-score only, and adverse muscle composition, both high muscle fat and low muscle volume. That's the worst one, I would imagine. Among the 9,840 participants with obesity, 2,001, 20%, had adverse muscle composition. Over an average follow-up period of 3.9 years, 174 participants died out of 2,000. So almost, geez louise, almost 10% of the uh, obese people died. With the most common cause of death being ischemic disease or hyper intensive disease, basically cardiovascular. Uh, the results show that participants with adverse muscle composition were three times more likely to die during follow-up than those with normal muscle composition, even after adjusting for factors such as hand grip strength, other diseases, lifestyle habits, as well as sex, age, type 2 diabetes, and smoking status. The association between poor muscle health and all-cause mortality remains significant. In this fully adjusted model, adverse muscle composition was linked to a 70% higher risk of early death. So even though you might be obese, if you have good muscle, then your life will be extended. If you have poor muscle, so you have zero exercise, uh, fat all up in your uh, muscles, then you're likely going to die early. So if you didn't realize it already, that being obese, meaning that you're heavier than you're supposed to be, you've consumed way too many calories versus how many you've burned, then you have put on excess weight. And it's going to hurt you. Big surprise, people. All right. Small, well-built Chinese EV called the Seagull poses a big threat to the U.S. auto industry. Yeah, we talked about this. Elon was suggesting that uh, Tesla won't survive without tariffs and, um, and supplementary monetary uh, contributions to his company. Uh, a tiny, low-priced electric car called the Seagull has American automakers and politicians trembling. Whoa, not really. Just put a tariff on it. You're not allowed to import it. Boom. Or uh, if you do import it, there's a 100% tax. So your $10,000 car 
is now $20,000. The car launched last year by Chinese automaker BYD sells for around $12,000 in China, but drives well and is put together with craftsmanship that rivals US-made electric vehicles that cost three times as much. A shorter range version costs under $10,000 smaller battery basically uh tariffs on imported chinese vehicles probably will keep the seagull away from america's shores for now and it likely would sell for more than 12 grand if imported obviously uh, but the rapid emergence of low-priced evs from china could shake up the global auto industry in ways not seen since japan makers exploded on the scene during the oil crisis of the 1970s byd which stands for build your dreams could be a nightmare for the u.s auto industry all right so if they're not paying attention, they're going to get uh, totally annihilated. Well, let's go ahead and let's have a look at this thing. What is the deal? Back for sure. In China, they are calling this as A0 to A1 sort of segment for the hatchback. It's under 3.8 meters long and just over 1.7 meters wide. In comparison, the size of this vehicle is just a little bit smaller than the standard Suzuki Swift. But the overall size, the dimension, the interior, the wheelbase is actually longer than the Suzuki Swift. All right, let's go. Let's see how it drives. Let's do a U-turn over here just to give it a test as we want to go to the highway speed of, after that. And crazy turning circle over here. That's being a small short wheelbase vehicle. That's really nice. And in terms of power, a single motor at the front that offers 55 kilowatts of power. I mean, whatever. For 10 grand, that seems like a pretty good deal, especially if you're not going to be affecting the environment so much. Uh, yeah, that seems smooth. Leg room might be an issue for taller people. But uh, yeah, there you go. There you have it. Boom. Watch out, Tesla. BYD is coming. Government scientist says, call the human population using pandemic to slow climate change. What? This sounds insane. A leading climate scientist has suggested a virulent pandemic killing swaths of the human population is the only way to reduce carbon emissions enough to halt climate change. Well, it's totally a uh, hinged individual here. Uh, Professor Bill McGuire was previously a member of the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies, SAGE, a British government body that adopted, sorry, advised politicians on the COVID pandemic response. He also helped author a report for the notorious Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, a United Nations body that has helped drive climate policy globally despite making a slew of errors. Uh, if I'm brutally honest, the only realistic way I see emissions falling as fast as they need to to avoid catastrophic climate breakdown is the culling of the human population by a pandemic with a very high fatality rate, wrote McGuire, professor of geophysical and climate hazards at University College London. Yeah, so McGuire previously said that the October 7th terrorist attack on Israel is what happens when people have nowhere else to turn. Yikes. Received a slew of negative responses. Climate change skeptics argued it was proof that the climate alarmist movement is a death cult, more concerned with the reordering society than saving lives. Right? Am I deleting the initial tweet now? Uh, not because I regret it, but because so many people out there have mistakenly or intentionally taken it the wrong way. Yeah, bro, you literally said that the only way you see we're going to reduce the climate change effect before catastrophic e events happen is to cull the human population. You're a psychopath. You are canceled. All right, climate change is affecting mental health literally everywhere. As you can see, that individual is totally uh, unhealthy mentally. Farmers who can't sleep, worrying they'll lose everything, amid increasing drought, youth struggling with depression over a future that feels hopeless, indigenous people grief-stricken over devastated ecosystems. For all these people and more, climate change is taking a clear toll on mental health in every part of the world. Experts shared these examples and others during a recent summit organized by the Connecting Climate Minds network that brought together hundreds of scientists, doctors, community leaders, and other experts from dozens of countries who have spent the last year studying how climate change is harming mental health in their regions. Although mental illnesses are often viewed as an individual problem, the experts made it clear that climate change is contributing to mental health challenges everywhere. It's a contagion. Like people are like, oh my God, like there's so much carbon in the atmosphere. Well, guess what? If you look historically back, we are at like a low point of carbon. It was like somewhere around the 1800s. It was at like 300 parts per million. And 250 plants start to die, so we're increasing from there. So the climate alarmists are cherry-picking the data set. They're not taking it over a uh, legitimate period of time. Whatever fits their narrative, they're going to go ahead and put it in there. And they're saying, oh, well, if it increases this much or decreases that much, then this. 
A lot of theories uh, believe that if it wasn't for the industrial age, then plants would have continued to, or carbon would have de continued to decrease and plants would have died. Well, we don't know, do we? Because it didn't happen. For us, mental health isn't just about individuals. It's about the collective well-being of our communities and the land itself. When nature suffers, so do we. Well, here's the deal. Stop pushing it like it's the craziest thing ever. Because since 1970, when uh, the New York Times came out and said, the world's going to end in X number of years because of this. And if we don't do that, this will happen. And literally every single time a ultimatum was put out there, we reached that threshold and passed it and nothing happened. Oh, guess what? Water levels didn't rise. The ice caps are still there. Weather is changing. Now they're trying to blame forest fires. Well, guess what? A lot of the proponents come out and say, uh, people like fire marshals and heads of fire departments and whatever, forest fire, agricultural uh, people, say that the government are not doing controlled burns enough. If you do controlled burns, then you uh, will mitigate the level of spreading. Extreme heat is associated with increased self-harm and violence, as well as more general feelings of negativity as also leads to feelings of isolation when people feel trapped inside their relatively cooler homes. Yeah, so it is true that, you know, there's more crime in the summer. Is that because there's less snow or more heat? It's debatable. Uh, wildfire or extreme weather stokes anxiety leading up to an event and afterward. Yeah, because when you look on the news, it's like the weather channel is uh, showing all red across the map at 28 or 30 degrees. When like 10 years ago, that would be like yellow, orange. And red is like 40 degrees because that's when people actually get jacked up. 30 degrees isn't a problem. Farmers and fisher people and others whose livelihoods are tied to the environment experience chronic stress, worry, and depression over things they can't control, like extreme weather, habitat loss, and drought. I'm sure they do. Uh, water scarcity increases stress for people in charge of seeking and transporting household water. Water scarcity also makes it hard for people to stay clean, potentially leading to isolation, loneliness, and depression. Mm-hmm. B.O. Can't make any friends. Air pollution can keep kids out of school, leading to social isolation, and over time, a sense of hopelessness about the future. So this is hilarious. Uh, none of these things are actually happening. No one really believes this. And if you do, then you have become part of the death cult about climate change. It's not that big of a deal. Trust me. Look at the science. Exclusive. Mother says daughter was attacked at school because she wasn't Muslim. And so begins the junior jihad. Savage police are investigating. Hilarious. Um, probably the area they're from. Not upset. A Minnesota mom is demanding answers after she says her nine-year-old daughter was jumped on the school playground by a group of girls who she was told targeted her daughter because she wasn't Muslim. Shauna Larson told Liz Collin reports about the disturbing details of the attack that she says took place on Monday, April 29th at Hidden Valley Elementary in Savage. Larson said her daughter's third grade teacher and principal approached her in the school pickup line after school to tell her what had happened. They came up to my vehicle and informed me that there was an incident at school that day. They wanted to make it very apparent that my daughter didn't do anything to cause this, and they told me this was a calculated incident and that she had been attacked on the playground by four other students in her grade. Good lord, like grade three, eight years old? What the heck is going on? Kids don't naturally behave this way. They would have to be taught this behavior. I ended up learning that this was due to her race and her religion because she wasn't Muslim. So that was pretty jarring to hear. Absolutely. Why are kids racist? Because their parents are racist. For more, absolutely fact. Larson said she was also told by a teacher that the girls said this was why they decided to beat her up. It wasn't until the next day when her daughter started to bruise that Larson realized the severity of the injuries. That's when we noticed that she had a black eye and we immediately took a picture of it. When she came home that day, I just kind of looked her over and she had bruises on her arms and bruises on her back, bruises all over her legs, Larson said. Yeah, she got a little shiner there. Absolutely. Larson's daughter told her that the girls pulled her down by the hair and started punching and kicking her. She told me she tried to get up, and when she tried to get up and go for help the first time, and I believe it was the first time that they had gotten her on the ground, that she was trying to fight back, and they had told her that if she hit them or she touched them, that they would hurt themselves and tell the teacher that she had hurt them. So she just told me, you know, so all I could do there is, is lay there, Mom. I was informed that on the camera footage it showed them going up to her and punching her in the face and hitting her back, and then she runs off and they run after her, and then that's when all of them got out of camera view, and that's when the initial attack happens. It's what the principal told me. Yeah, my daughter hadn't done anything to initiate this or create what had happened. This was just because of her race and her religion, so that was a big thing. Congratulations, you know, Islamophobia. Yeah, I'm sure that's the problem, and if it is, it's because of this, because their parents 
believe that Sharia law should be brought in. They believe in uh, Muslim supremacy. Absolutely, they do. If you don't think so, you're wrong. They believe that everyone who doesn't believe in uh, Islam is an infidel. And if you don't choose Islam, then you should die. So there it is. Very alarming. Absolutely. Terrifying. The junior jihad has begun. All right. White House needs a strategy for combating Islamophobia. Islamophobia, say rights group. Yeah, of course. It's definitely Islamophobia that's the problem on the universities, right? Like all the Palestinian uh, and Hamas supporters. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's anti-Semitic. They need a to deal with that, anti-Semitism. Any genuine attempt to combat Islamophobia must start with the government acknowledging the harm it continues to inflict both domestically and internationally and offering adequate redress to affect communities at home and globally. How about you rein these people in and uh, tell them not to set their kids on uh, non-Muslims? Anyway, we're not even going to get into this because the fact of the matter is, is that uh, Islamophobia is real, just like homophobia. People aren't afraid of it. They just don't like it, okay? They don't like being told what to do or having something forced upon them, such as, like, pride, you know? You be gay, that's great. Do it in your house. Don't have a pride parade where dudes are swinging dildos around and uh, mock banging each other with hip thrusting on floats and stuff. It's disgusting. I've seen it. It's absolutely disgusting. Like, if you want to have a parade, that's fine. You want to have a parade in public with their children, don't be at that stuff. It's disgusting. And Islam as well. If you're going to be sending your kids to school and they think that it's okay to beat up other children because they're non-Muslim, uh, then you're a terrible parent and a terrible representative of the human race. Boom. Foreign terrorist organizations could target Pride Month events, the FBI and DHS state, and they say it could come online, in person, or even in the mail. Good Lord, you got a letter in the mail stating that People don't like the LGBTQIA plus related events and venues, the alts, the alternatives. Foreign terrorist organizations may seek to exploit LGBTQIA plus related events and venues, including events during the 2024 Pride Month celebrated in June. The FBI and Department of Homeland Security warned in a recent public service announcement. Organizations like ISIS may seek to exploit increased gatherings associated with the upcoming June 2024 Pride Month. And what is ISIS? They're Muslim. Here is the report they put out saying uh, the efforts to commit or inspire violence against holiday celebrations, including pride celebrations or LGBTQIA plus related venues, are compounded by the current heightened threat environment in the United States and other Western countries. FDOs and their supporters have previously promoted anti-LGBTQIA plus rhetoric and targeted LGBTQ. IA plus related events or venues for attack. In February 2023, English language ISIS messaging featured an article focused on anti-alts rhetoric and rallied against the growth and promotion. Uh, June 12, 2024 marks the 8th anniversary of the Pulse nightclub Orlando shooting. June 2023, three alleged ISIS sympathizers were arrested for attempting to attack a pride parade in Vienna, Austria using knives and a vehicle as part of the attack. So yeah, what they're saying is that uh, people are sick of it. They are tired of seeing it ram down their throats and in their faces in the grocery store. And the most extreme of individuals, the Islamic Muslim Brotherhood, uh, are probably going to act out because Christians just take it these days. They're just like, okay, yeah, like most, uh, everyone's accepted. You can come on into the church. And that wasn't Jesus' way. He said, all right, he, without sin, cast the first stone against this prostitute. And guess what? None of them did. They couldn't do it. They're like, well, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. So we won't be doing that. And then he walked up to the prostitute and he said, Hey, you see this? It's all good. But don't go and prostitute yourself anymore. Go forward and sin no more. Not go forward and keep prostituting yourself. It's totally cool with the J-man. Houston transgender suspect runs over and fatally stabs a man. What the heck? Karen Fisher, Karan, accused of running over stabbing Stephen Anderson in Houston. Here we have distraught family members, it looks like. Suspect... Allegedly seen on video running over a man twice with a car before straddling, kissing, and fatally stabbing him multiple times in broad daylight has been charged with murder. Thank goodness. Karan Fisher, 20, is described in court documents obtained by KTRK-TV as a man, but is referred to as a she by the Houston Police Department. The homicide took place around 7.50 p.m. May 3rd, police said in a press release. Neighbor video obtained by KTRK appears to show an intentional attack on the man who is said to be on his way to pick up his mail. 
It shows the victim identified in reports as 64-year-old Steven Anderson turning around to look at the screeching white car barreling towards him before it struck him, reversed to hit him a second time. The suspect seen in all black then appears with a knife in hand before flipping Anderson over, straddling him, kissing him, and then stabbing him nine times. Here's a uh, picture of the individual. Suspect then tries getting into another car unsuccessfully before jumping over the victim's body and taking off. There's another mug shot uh, from 2003. Totally normal individual, obviously. All right, so close your eyes, people, because we're going to check out a video of this. And if you're scared, then 100% turn off the video, like, and subscribe. Let's have a look what the heck happened to this poor man. We pray for your soul, sir. Teen deeply disturbing and shocking video of a murder in broad daylight. On May 3rd, the victim, Stephen Anderson, is walking on Woodridge Square Drive to pick up his mail, sources tell us. He turns around at the sound of a screeching car speeding right into him. We're pausing the video right before he gets hit. The car reverses and hits him again, pushing him further into the street. Neighbors are on the phone, frantically calling 911. Another neighbor comes out with a pillow. Yes, but. And that's when the suspect, Karen Fisher, identified in court records as a man, but also described as she by police, returns with a knife in hand. The suspect yanks and flips Anderson over, straddles him, and kisses him. We're not showing what happens next because it's too graphic, but that's when police say Fisher stabs him. Yeah, absolutely disgusting. So, a uh, totally normal individual. Uh, you know. Absolutely mentally healthy. Let's go ahead and focus on that, okay? The individual is mentally unstable. She or he believes they're a she. And they dress like it. And guess what? They murder a dude for no reason. Like, And had very, very peculiar behavior. Uh, yeah, so anyway, God rest your soul, sir. And uh, we'll pray for that individual to uh, be able to overcome the demonization of her, their body. Sigma Tiger. Signing out.